in the 14th century, everybody knew that the way to conquer the world would be by sea. And the Portuguese knew that very well. And they have proven that by the Battle of Dio. That's what we'll find out in this video. Hey folks, how are you doing? This is the Asgard's history and today we're talking about the Battle of Dio. We all know that Portugal had many different types of markets, some a little bit darker than others, but the most famous one was the spice, which was not that easy to establish since the Muslim countries were not so happy about giving away all the wealth they were getting. By the time of King Manuel I, Portugal had to face a difficult time with them. The year was 1508, when the Muslim decided to make a move that was not the smartest one for them. As I said earlier, Portugal had some trading posts already scattered around all India and Muslim countries. Although, once the governor Malik Ayaz decided to attack one of these trading posts in this city that I that I'll put it up here, I do not dare to pronounce that name. With, if I'm not mistaken, for this, they led an army of 800 men to attack this city. In there, we had around 150 Portuguese willing to fight, which 80 of them have died. But among the, those 80, there was one person that should never be killed. His name was Lorenzo de Almeida, son of Francisco de Almeida, a person that you will get to know just in a moment. We all knew that the Portuguese could put up a difficult fight and let's see the odds. We had 800 men ready to siege and trading post and 150 fighting men. But the funny part is that the Portuguese only lost 80 people, but only 100 Muslims managed to survive that attack. So. They already knew that it was not the smartest idea to put up a wall with Portugal, especially because of their military technology. Malik knew about that, so he have sent a letter to Portugal, sent by land, to apologize and ask for mercy from his father in regards to his son's death. Once the letter arrived to Portugal, Francisco asked for the King Manuel I permission to attack Dio which was denied. The king knew that we needed that trading market. But Francisco was not happy with that answer. So he proceeded to send a letter to India saying that he wanted to kill those who murdered his son. After gathering his 18 ships and around 1500 men, he started the voyage to India. But the way was a little bit treacherous. It would take around 10 months to 12 months to arrive there. And because of the, the Atlantic currents, he had to go first to Brazil, then to South Africa, and then up to the Indies. It was not a really easy travel to do. Most of his crew would have gotten sick or really weak by the time of the arrival. Yet, he decided to go anyway. On the other hand, the Muslims have asked for help to the Ottoman Empire and some other neighbors to help defeat these Christians that were attacking. When the Portuguese arrived, they were facing a number around 5,000 men and 200 war galleons in their side, coming out from the exit of the canal and around the coast of the country. I can just imagine being a Muslim waiting for a huge army with my huge army and then arrives just 18 ships with miserable Portuguese trying to attack from all the ways but we are like 200 war galleons and then out of the sudden before sunset almost all my ships were either sunken or sailed away in fear but I digress that's history Francisco saw where, where the ships were coming from, so he decided to put his own ship, his biggest one, in the exit of the canal to avoid any others to 
come and aid those already in battle. So his ship, called Flor do Mar, Flower of the Sea in English, was just there, blocking the, the way while the rest of them were fighting in the coast. The Portuguese were the first ones to fire, and then after some exchanges, there was one ship that decided to take a different military maneuver. This ship was called the Holy Spirit, or in Portuguese, Espírito Santo, and he decided to place his cannons just above sea level, not only to confuse the enemy with the body of water that would be lifted by the fires, but also to reach a lower part of the, of the ships. With this vision of terror, the Muslims started to sail away, those who managed to do that. Once the Portuguese won that war, you might think that the revenge was done, but no, Francisco wanted something a little bit harder. Those who managed to survive but didn't manage to run away or sail away were either burned alive, exploded inside their own cannons, just dismembered, or they just made them fight till death. Some things like that, just to send a message to not mess with them. Sorry we had to change place, but it was starting to rain and these are the problems of filming outside. Anyway, this was my take on the um, on the Battle of Dio. This video was fully inspired on this Brazilian channel that I will link down below and put the video somewhere over here. So for those of you who understand Portuguese and want to see some actual fun animations and not some boring ass guy speaking b behind the castle wall you can check them out also i was using the same sources as he was and they are the book from roger crawley conquerors how portugal forged the first global empire the book from william wire 50 battles that changed the world and the book from R.G. Grant, 1001 Battles That Changed the Course of History. So I suggest that you go check them out and if you want me to make a full-on video with more details on this battle, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.